So patients with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy or dilated cardiomyopathy have a general risk of dying from heart failure or sudden death of about 6% per year, can be as high as 10% per year. Sudden death accounts for a proportion of these deaths, it's about 2 or 3% per year. So that's quite a complicated question because there are lots of different causes of dilated cardiomyopathy. It can be caused by sometimes alcohol, but infection such as a viral infection or inherited causes um, or certain drugs like chemotherapy. So about 40% are caused by inherited heart conditions. There are certain inherited conditions like lamin cardiomyopathies or sodium channel mutations or filament mutations. And we can use um, that to actually help us identify who's likely to be at greater risk. So the patients at higher risk, for example, might have a lamin mutation in their family and they may be a carrier as well. And that will be an indicator of high risk. The other way we can look at risk, there's a very large study called the Danish trial, which looked at particular groups of patients and found it was actually the younger patients under 59 years, or those who had a high NT pro BNP biomarker, these were people who were at lower NT pro BNP, who were at higher risk of developing sudden cardiac death. So the main um, imaging technique we use to look at all these patients is um, an MRI scan. We use that to look for fibrosis. And we look for particular patterns of scar or fibrosis within the myocardium. So looking particularly if there's scar in the posterior lateral wall of the left ventricle, that'll be a sign of an arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy such as um, caused by certain mutations in the desmosome or lamin cardiomyopathies. And those are particular groups that are at a high risk of ventricular arrhythmia. Um, there is a lot of research being done seeing if you can use the amount of scar to predict heart failure or sudden death. It usually generally predicts mortality or heart failure death, but it hasn't been particularly helpful in predicting arrhythmogenic death, but that's something we're working towards. The main factors are optimal medical therapy, so that reduces death from heart failure as well as sudden cardiac death. So high use of beta blockade, ACE inhibitors, and newer drugs like neprilysin inhibitors. Um, these are all uh, neprilysin, which are very important um, agents. And then uh, the second thing is if they've got left bundle branch plot, they should have a CRT device because that remodels the left ventricle and improves um, ejection fraction. And then, of course, an ICD in, a, in the patients who are likely to benefit from prevention of sudden death rather than um, heart failure alone. Right, my highlights have been more, actually, some of the debates. There was a very interesting discussion about Cabana, the Cabana AF trial, about how that's going to change practice. And also, this, these meetings are really important for us to actually share ideas and views. And I've had a number of meetings about setting up clinical trials and studies to improve patients' treatment. And that really is one of the most valuable things about meetings such as this, these international meetings.